Shift Option Command uh, and Z for my modify or for my uh, quick find window. It's just as simple as, as t uh, entering it on the keyboard and then um, it will pick it up. So I'm just going to remove it. So right now it shows none, and I'm going to hit those keys, and you'll notice that it pops back in there. So once you've entered it on your keys uh, on your keyboard, you can click done, and then you can do the same for setting up a new task. Uh, so I'll, re I'll remove that, and I'm going to once again hold down Shift Option Command T, and I'm going to create a new shortcut for that. So uh, you can set up your own shortcut. I, I have uh, a four key combination, just trying to uh, eliminate um, any other programs that might use it. Uh, but if there's something else that feels a lot more comfortable, but by all means, uh, use it. The the biggest thing is if you're going to be using the uh, the hotkey preferences, then you want to be able to take advantage of it. Now let's go through that that process. So uh, let's say the phone rings. Well, in daylight, uh, you can use a task to track a call. Now, just to, to expand on this, the difference between a task and an appointment is rather simple. Uh, a task is something day-oriented. So if I had to call someone on the 17th, if I had to call someone on the 18th, uh, that's something that I could log as a task. If I had to call someone uh, from 5 to 6 p.m. on the 17th, that's something that's an appointment because a time uh, block is taken up. So appointments are really a specific time period, whereas a task is day-oriented. So in, in this case, uh, the phone rings, and I'm going to pull up uh, my my quick uh, uh, my hotkey for the uh, the new task. So you'll notice that uh, Daylight's created a new task for me, uh, and it's already checked off the start date. Now this is something that you can set up in the default values. Uh, so just to quickly show you where that is, I'm just going to go to the Daylight Preferences. So uh, Daylight Preferences, and then under Default Values. This is where you can set up a number of different uh, defaults. Now, in this case, I have it set up under task, and you'll notice that I've automatically set the start date. So this means when I create a new task, Daylight's automatically checking this checkbox, so I can start the, the, the start time of this task. So uh, going back to the blocking this call, uh, once again, I can say, uh, we're just going to give it a title. Right now, I don't have any information, uh, but I'm going to say call, and it's an inbound call. Now, going back to the nature of daylight, to show what this task is for, you want to establish a link. So once I find out, maybe it's Miriam giving me a call. Uh, Miriam's one of the contacts that I've been dealing with. I'm going to use that shortcut to bring up my find window, and I'm going to search for Miriam. Now, I can't remember Miriam's last name off the top of my head, so I'm just going to type in the first name. And you'll notice uh, that the quick find has it's, right now, it's just a, it's searching for contacts and organizations, and, and it's pulled up both Miriam and her organization. So within a matter of seconds, I can now link this new task to Miriam. So I can say, call from Miriam, and, uh, and I find out she was interested in some information. Uh, so we spoke about package A. Now, once I'm done this call, I can hit this complete date. So this way, it's going to track the start and end time of the call. Now, the detailed field, of, of course, is fairly straightforward. You're entering the details of, of uh, this call. Um, but maybe there's a follow-up. Uh, maybe I have to touch base in two weeks because we spoke about package A. She, she needs to digest that information, and I need to follow up to ensure that um, she doesn't get caught up with something else. And, and I don't want to, to let these things fall through the crack. Uh, so following along, uh, once you've actually completed this uh, a date for a task, this next field becomes available. So this is where you can change it from continue to follow up task or appointment. So if I needed to, once again, if I needed to follow up on the, uh, say, the 24th, uh, I could set up a follow up task. If I had a caller at 1 p.m. on the, on the 24th, uh, then I'd want to set up an appointment. But in this case, we're just going to set up a task, and I'm going to click OK. Now, before I move on, um, I, I want to show you what Daylight's done so far. So I'm going to go to Miriam's record. I'm going to hold down that option key to, to jump to it one more time. And, and now I'm viewing Miriam's contact record in Daylight. Now, going back to the activity tab, this is showing me her activity in chronological order. So when I look at today, I can already see the call from today and that we spoke about package J. Now, I'm going to go back to that follow-up task that I started creating. So what this has done is it logged the call. And now it's created a follow-up, so I can say, okay, i got to follow up uh, on this call from Miriam, uh, and I'm going to set the due date for next week. 
So in, there's a few ways you can enter the date. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to type in next week, and it's actually going to select next week for me. Uh, you could also use the date picker, um, so you'd actually be able to, to manually set the date. Or you can do shortcuts, like as an example, since I know it's for the 24th of this month, I can just enter 24, and Daylight's smart enough to pick this month. Um, if it was something, say, due for, for Saturday, I could type in Saturday, and it's going to pick the next Saturday in the list. So those are just a couple uh, neat tricks of entering the date. Uh, in this case, once again, we want to have it set for the 24th. And I'm going to remind me, because you know what? i got a lot going on, and I want Daylight to remind me. Now, just to expand on the reminders, uh, you can set up default reminders within the notifications uh, preferences. Uh, so there's a shortcut within there that will take you right to it. Um, it, once again, it's just from the daylight preferences under notifications, and this is where you can set the defaults for both your appointments and your tasks. So the idea is, once they're set, all you need to do is click this little checkbox, and then you can forget about it. This way, daylight's going to remind you when that task is due. Now, I, I did catch your uh, your question, Joshua, about how all this syncs with uh, the calendar and the contacts and email. So I'm going to talk about the, the email integration momentarily. Uh, but just in terms of the sync with uh, uh, Apple's address book and iCal, this is all done through sync services. So when you have a moment, uh, you can go into the help system and take a look at this daylight synchronization guide. Now, this there is a some pages to go through. It's not too much. I think it's about 16 pages and, and, and some of it has charts and, and examples and things like that. Uh, but the idea is really understanding what synchronization does. Uh, so just to, to quickly touch base on it, it really makes the same on both sides. Um, so when I say that, if you are syncing a contact uh, with your address book through sync services and you choose to delete the contact from address book, you're telling sync services that you no longer want this record, uh, so it's going to remove it through the rest of the system. So that's why it's really important just to understand the behavior of sync, so that way you don't run into any unexpected uh, uh, behavior. Uh, but but absolutely, all your contacts, your your appointments, uh, your tasks, and uh, and of course your contacts can sync with uh, um, uh, sync services. So once you have this, just to, to go back to the, the call, uh, I hope I didn't uh, uh, lose anybody there. Um, so we've already uh, set up a follow-up, and, and now I can forget about it. Uh, so on the 24th, Daylight's going to remind me. Now, the neat thing about this, and I'm going to show the notification system in a second, uh, but the neat thing about this activity tab, once again, is it really does show everything in chronological order. So I want to follow up. Um, with Miriam with an email just to, to thank her for her call and just a reminder that I'm going to touch base next week. So from within Daylight, I can select her contact. From the action menu, I can select write email. Now there is a shortcut to do a little bit quicker. It's uh, Shift Command M, and this is going to trigger a new email in Apple Mail with Miriam's details. Now you'll notice that there's a little drawer uh, or, or side window, I guess you could say it, uh, that gets added on. And this relates to the Daylight Mail integration uh, plugin that, that integrates Daylight with Apple Mail. So when you first launch it, you'll need to connect the, it to your Daylight database. So that's all this window is asking you to do. So when you click Connect Now, it's now connecting it to the Daylight database. And you'll notice that Miriam's contact record has been pulled in. This is because Miriam's email address already exists with her contact record. So this email address matches this contact, so DMI pulls it in. Now, you'll also notice that it's pulled in this logo design, and that's because this logo design project is also linked to Merriam. So because this is active, DMI will allow you to link this email to the project as well. So if this is something that relates to this project, you can ensure all this information links up nice and tight. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to send Merriam a quick email. I'm just going to say thanks for your call. And I'm just going to say thanks again. Um, I'll touch base next week. And I can fire that off. Now you'll notice, once again, that within the activity tab of Miriam's contact record, that email's there. So now when I go back, I can see the call from, from um, first thing, and then I can see my follow-up email, and then I can see my follow-up task that's set. So that way I know on, on Thursday to, to follow up with Miriam. So that way, when you start working on other contacts and other things, and, and other things kind of take up your uh, uh, what you're doing, then you, you have something to fall back on. Now, in addition to being able, of course, trigger emails from daylight, uh, 
uh, when you're receiving these emails, it's important to be able to log this stuff as well. So let's open up the mail window. And we're going to take a look at, uh, at a few emails that I have here. So if I select Jane Doe, uh, let's, uh, there we go. Uh, when I select Jane Doe, you'll currently see how the contact does not exist in daylight. So what this means is this email address does not exist with any contact in the database. So when you click Add to Daylight, this is allowing you to do two things. The first, of course, is to search for the contact. So if the contact did show up, you could simply add the email to the existing contact. Well, in this case, I don't have a contact for Jane Doe, so I want to make sure that I have one for her. So I'm going to set the category of, of uh, let's say, client, and I'm going to create one quickly. So now you'll notice that once again DMI has pulled the contact into the DMI drawer and, and that way I can now link this inbound email to the contact. So this way when I do so I'm going to now jump to this email oopsies. I'm going to jump to this email and now I can see um, first of all it's showing me the actual note in daylight so it is important to understand that these emails are separate now from the, the mail uh, or sorry from the email in mail. Uh, so I could, in fact, delete this, and you'll notice that this email is still in my daylight database. So that way you don't have to, to worry about this stuff being uh, uh, disconnected somehow. But of course, when I look at Jane's contact record, I can see that email from today. More importantly, when I respond, I can have, I can have all those uh, responses as well. And I'll just say thanks. And of course, you can see it there. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is how attachments work. Um, so when I'm within, uh, if I'm sending an email or receiving one, within the DMI drawer, there's a little checkbox at the very bottom, and it allows you to strip attachments. So I'm just going to, uh, let's do this. I'm going to uh, hide my backdrop for a second. Let me just pull up a screenshot that uh, will work for the, or let me just pull up a screenshot. Very good. Something so maybe I had to send uh, uh, some information um, to this uh, this contact uh, because I'm choosing to not strip the attachment. I want to be able to see this stuff in daylight. Uh, so when I fire this off, and I'm going to take a look at uh, Jane's contact record, I can now see that attachment right in there. Uh, so this makes it really easy when you're going back to view a contact's record uh, to see everything that was said uh, uh, sent and not just what was said. Now there is one other neat little thing that I want to quickly show you, uh, and this really might help speed up the time of, of things that you have to send on a regular basis. So, in, and this also applies to uh, to merges. Um, so I, I just wanted to to kind of loop back to your question, Josh. Um, so in terms of merges, uh, Daylight has letter templates. So I'm just going to open up the preferences. And these are letters that you can set up in the preferences. So I, I have a few already. Um, these are part of the, uh, the industry database. Um, but just to show you what this memo is, um, so as you can see, it has some tokens. And, and what this is going to do is it's going to pull the information from the actual contact that I select. Uh, so I'm going to quickly run through this. Now, this is one of the neat ways that you can take advantage of these letter templates. Now, by default, uh, if you were to simply select a, a bunch of contacts, uh, from the action menu, you can go merge, write letter, and daylight. Uh, and this is where you'd be able to select the template uh, and then email it. Maybe you want to open it up in the email client. Uh, maybe you want to print it off so that you can actually send it via snail mail. Uh, you have a few options there, but once you actually hit that merge, it's going to put this email together. Now, to show you this, I'm actually going to go back into mail because this is something that gets added uh, with DMI. So uh, maybe I needed to send Jane um, a package of information that I have to send on, on a regular basis. Uh, I can just simply select Jane from the DMI drawer, uh, select where I want to put this information, and using the DMI drawer, um, the little gear at the bottom of the DMI drawer, I can select Merge. And this is going to pull down a little drop down with the letter templates that I have in daylight, and I can select Memo and hit Merge. You'll now notice that it's taken the information uh, it's used those those merge keys that were entered, and it's it's actually taken the information from Jane's contact record, uh, and of course my user account. So this way, uh, within three clicks, I can send this prepackage of information. Now, uh, you might want to add some additional stuff. So you you could uh, say, uh, hey, thanks, and, and so forth. Uh, this is all based on on how you set up your uh, letter template. But this way, you can quickly fire stuff off.
Now, in addition, um, I, I want to just make sure that I also show about the uh, the notification window because that's where the stuff uh, those, those reminders.